So welcome everybody to today's webinar on employee journey mapping. Uh, my name is Joe Pierce. I'll be your host today. And uh, we have an exciting webinar today. We're going to have a short discussion on employee journey mapping. So I want to unlock the power of employee journey mapping so that you can better understand uh, what it is, how you can use it in your current jobs. Uh, we'll talk about some of the different stages of employee journey mapping and hopefully you have some good takeaways that you can take back to your organizations. You can apply to some of the jobs that you're doing and um, we'll go from there. So first and foremost, please let me know where you're joining from just to give me a sense of where we are in the map. I'm used to a very global cohort of uh, students when I when I teach classes. And so it helps with engagement, helps me kind of bring it into perspective. I'm coming to you today from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. So on the East Coast, uh, we have some folks from San Antonio, Texas, I know, uh, and uh, quite a few from Phoenix, Arizona. So welcome, welcome from the heat. Uh, Sarasota, Florida, thank you. Plano, Texas, great. Uh, very, very much glad to have you. Um, in order to make this session as, as interactive and engaging as possible, um, I will ask questions. And so I'll ask questions and, and I'd like for you to try to participate, share your information, share your, your, your thoughts, your insights, your questions. Um, please please don't hesitate to put questions here in the chat. I see some, some great uh, comments on the chat. Uh, Miami, Florida, welcome. Um, and we're, we're glad to have you. So, so please go ahead and, 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 and let us know where you're from and go ahead and ask any questions that you may have in reference to employee journey mapping. And I, if I don't answer them, I'll do my best to. And if I don't quite get there, I will. we will try to follow up with you and, and get those questions answered. You can also use the Q&A uh, button. And that way I can track um, which questions I've answered and, and not. But remember it's, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I am going to uh, be talking and I have only a few slides, so it's not it's not slide heavy. It's more of a, a conversation. So, yeah, America's Furnace, I love it. Uh, and Bill Powers, welcome from uh, Louis, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so 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 great to have everybody. So, first question I have is is do we have anybody with any deep experience in employee journey mapping in um, in here? So, if you have experience, please let us know if you have some experience using it. Uh, tell us, tell the rest of the group, how, how did you use employee journey mapping? Okay. And then we'll come back to that. Um, by the end of this webinar, uh, I hope to leave you with a solid understanding of how employee journey mapping, it can be a powerful tool. It'll, it can help you strengthen your human resources practices. It can help you increase in employee engagement. Um, and hopefully I'll leave you with a few actionable steps of what you can do to implement employee journey mapping uh, effectively in your organization. So let's let's get started. So so let's talk about the employee journey and the different stages that 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 employees go through. Um, and we can talk about how as we go through employee mapping, we can really identify um, you know, what our employees are thinking about, what they experience. And our goal is to help improve the employee experience in such a way that it creates value for not only for the employee, but also for the organization. So from the initial attraction, when we are identifying potential employees, and we're, we're looking at that attraction and that recruitment phase, um, we we try to bring the best talent to our organizations. Um, then once we go through the hiring process, then we onboard, uh, then employees have some kind of development and growth. And then finally, um, employees are going to leave. And so all employees aren't going to stay there for 10 to 20 years, uh, employees do leave. And so when employees decide to leave, then they, finally have to do some kind of offboarding, turn in at least their badge, their computer, or whatever work materials they have. And we think through that as an employee's journey. Um, during that journey, there's some, 
specific touch points that that employees go through. Um, those those touch points create an opportunity for us to either create a positive or a negative employee experience. So we're going to talk about five steps to do employee journey mapping. Um, the first step is we are going to the first step is that we're going to define and select what types of employees that we have. So as we think about this is we have to look at what different roles we have, what, what different departments are we experiencing, um, what stage of, of a career. Okay, I'm still seeing the blue title slide. Yes, the, it, it should have already changed. It's a little bit of a lag time. So uh, hopefully it has popped up. Uh, Rob, if you can give me a thumbs up or, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so a little bit of a lag time um, because we are you know, presenting, uh, but hopefully it catches up. So again, first step is define and select the employee type. Uh, the key is to really think through um, we, what characteristics are we facing? Um, what are the needs of this employee group? And then we can create a more targeted and relevant journey map. Um, one way that that we do this is by creating a persona. Okay, and a persona is simply a way to do this defining and selecting employee types. So, for example, um, you can think of I've, I've recently done some work with a, a few. Um, counties and municipal offices. And so they think through their different types of employees that they may have. I'll, and I'll go on to the next slide. And so as they're personalizing these different roles, the personalizing the roles really helps you identify what are the needs, wants, desires of each type of employee that you may have. And here's a, a couple of examples here. And by identifying the persona, um, you can really use this as a targeted way to apply your journey map. Has anybody have experience using personas in your organizations? Uh, please go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, and if you have, how have you used personas? Just a sentence or a note. Yeah, web usage. Great. Uh, Sonia says, a little for external recruitment into our organization. So you can think of the type of people that you want to hire. Um, but yeah, Paul says, great, looking for a specific skill set when hiring. Yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, Abby says, when writing job descriptions, right, we think of that person that we want to bring on our team. Okay. And so here's some, just a good example is that uh, you, can, you can look on here and see these are the different types of people that we may have. You can understand what their profile is and what goals they may have, because they may have individual goals that may or may not line up with your organizational goals. Uh, Sean, great, great example. Personas to help guide user story creation as a persona to ensure we have a clear type of person in mind for the problem we're solving. Perfect. Uh, used for system automation. Great. And so personas help us make it, as the word says, very personal. As we think about what types of people we're bringing onto our team, what types of needs and wants and desires that we may have. As we craft a persona, I, I like to use kind of a quadrant style uh, and make almost like a card and, and be creative with it and actually put a picture. And again, these are, as we think about it, this is your, you could say, this is your typical employee. It doesn't have to be typical, but as you think about the different types of employees you have, you may have a, a mix of initial entry persons. Uh, you may have some initial, you may have some very experienced per people coming on your team. And so you can kind of map out and do a journey map for each type of employee that you may have. 
Okay, so here's just a, a great example of how do we craft a persona? Here is a way. And I use this when I teach human resources and learning and development professionals to be more agile, because as you think of the different types of employees, you can think of what opportunities are that you may have to meet their needs. So a uh, great example here is uh, you use this persona to, to, as it says on the, the third bullet down, identify the who, how, what, and why this person will interact with our product or service. And we can take this as a baseline to begin to think about how, how, it, how does it fit into the whole system. The second step in the uh, journey mapping process is to actually map out the employee journey. Okay, and so we have to map out what are the different stages of the, the employee journey. So typically it goes with some sort of a pre-hiring process, a hiring process, an onboarding process, then the, to develop the employee. So they start developing skills while performing daily, daily tasks. Then they begin to progress. And so they walk through opportunities to advance their career within the, within the company. And then finally, when they decide that they're ready for something else, they, they go to the offboarding. And so as we think about the, the employee journey, the employee journey allows us to truly apply some design thinking to, to our employees. And by that, what I mean is that we are often able to empathize with what, what is that employee doing, thinking, feeling, and experiencing. And we put ourselves in their shoes. I've seen organizations use this, especially when they're trying to adjust their current practices to be more inclusive, to be more considerate of uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. I've seen organizations use this to try to empathize with uh, new hires to, to figure out what are the opportunities that we have to Im improve our hiring or our onboarding process, or how do we improve our retention? And so by empathizing and creating an employee journey map, we're often able to go back and take a look at what are their needs, wants, uh, what are they doing, thinking, feeling, experiencing, and then potentially what are, what are the opportunities that we have for improvement? And I'm gonna go back and forth to the slide a little bit, but uh, this is just a, a great sample of an employee journey map. As you see, you can, you can see that we have, what are they doing, thinking, feeling, experiencing along the left-hand side. And you can see across the top, that would be, the different stages of the employee's journey. And as you see, you can go through the kind of the pre-hiring, the hiring, onboarding. You see the development uh, from week one to month one to year one. And then they, as they stay longer across the top, uh, they do some progression. They may get some promotions in there. And then finally they will exit the company. And again, it doesn't have to necessarily be a, uh, there's not a time limit on there. That's why it says year in. And then finally, after they've left, are they going to talk well about your company or are they going to um, disparage your company? And so as we think about this in the employee journey map, um, you can see how, the, number one, the employee journey is a unified view of how, how do employees feel about their experience in your organization. It, it, it maps out their entire experience. And by mapping out your employee's journey, you can figure out what matters most to your employees. And by empathizing with them uh, along that left-hand side, we can identify what areas um, may require some attention? And again, this is just an example. There are numerous examples you can find on the web. 
if you if you just even Google employee journey mapping, um, the experience. Uh, I think this is a good visual way to identify: are, are they having a positive or negative experience with with your organization? Alexia, thank you for asking. Great question. Would you recommend creating an employee journey map for each persona if you had two or three that come you commonly use? And yes, I, I would create a, a an employee journey map for each persona. And if you think uh, I would start with your typical employee, and sometimes you even may want to do a few outliers. You may have some that are um, that are very different. You, you may have one that is, again, I give the example of a, a new college graduate who's joining your organization versus a new person coming in as a mid-level manager versus someone who's coming in as, a, as, as an executive level person. All those would have different wants, needs, desire. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, uh, other typical questions I get about this time are, you know, as we're thinking about our employee journey, you know, you know, how many personas do, do we want to address? Again, you, you have as much time as you want to dedicate to this process. Um, I like to do employee journey mapping as, as a group session. And so, you, you know, it's not just me as an individual doing this journey map to figure out how I want to adjust human resources within my organization. Um, but oftentimes this is a good group exercise that that is meant to, to generate feedback. And we'll talk some more about that. So as we talk about this, um, let's move on to the next step. So the next step is exactly that, which is we want to gather employee feedback. And so as we map out this employee journey, we want to also uh, gain feedback. So in order to create an effective employee journey, you have to have the ability to connect with the different people along every stage of the employee journey. And as, again, going back to our employee journey sample is that we need to, in order to have a better understanding of what we're doing, thinking, feeling, experiencing, we have to have some feedback. OK, this uh, this feedback is, is not only is essential to to gather, but it will generate some insight that will help you identify gaps, issues, opportunities for improvement that you might otherwise overlook. And that's why that column along the bottom, uh, the row at the end of at the bottom of our slide shows these are some opportunities that may come out of appropriately. Uh, describing our employee journey. And again, the next step is, so feedback will help you identify the opportunities, the opportunities we try to capture along that bottom row. And with an employee map and uh, with a journey map and employee feedback, opportunities arise that will create value. Okay. And the value could be realized in employee retention value could be real, realized in uh, employee satisfaction, increased job performance. All those are, are different ways that we create value. Um, it also could lead to increased uh, engagement uh, as, as we move forward. So has, um, what, are, what, are ways, what are ways that your organizations have used journey mapping to identify pain points and improve the employee experience? Does anybody have uh, any, any experience using journey mapping to identify pain points. Yeah, um, Sonia says that, that they are currently doing this to improve their entire onboarding experience across the enterprise. Uh, Bill says, nope, they, they aren't doing it. Um, and so hopefully this gives you some ideas of something uh, that you could easily do as a tool to help, to help drive it. And so employee journey mapping, again, some of the uh, benefits of it are we can help clear it, it really as you use those personas, you can clarify roles and responsibilities, uh, understand how resources are being allocated. We can under, understand the, the, the employee sentiment. What are, what are they feeling? 
and we can begin to forecast what 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 changes in behavior are we expecting to see out of our employees. Uh, another benefit of it, uh, yeah, great, Monday. This is uh, you know just participated in a code jam, and this idea was pitched along with using AI to assist. Yeah, very very interesting. Um, employee journey mapping also helps us as we as we can follow the sentiments and we can predict what sentiments are going to happen based on what we know about employee experiences, based on the feedback that we're gathering. And we can figure out which resources we want to prioritize to fix. And so as um, uh, one of you just said, is that we can, we can prioritize the efforts which we are going to address. And so we may see that our it's our onboarding process is too long. And because it's too long, we aren't allowing our employees to begin to perform the duties that they were hired to perform. And if they're not ready to perform those in a certain amount of time, we are actually losing value because we're paying them, they're not able to perform, and we need them to do the work that they were hired to do. So understanding which touch points that you have in each of these along the employee experience, we can find out you know, those pain points, we can find out um, what gaps do we have in that employee experience, and we can find opportunities for improvement. So again, journey mapping can help enhance the onboarding process, improve communication channels, uh, foster a culture of continuous learning, and finally, it can help organizations uh, develop. An employee journey map, however, is only as good as it is relevant. And so if you don't go back and look at your employee journey map from time to time, and you forget to do the last step, which is to revise your journey map, because over time, you get different types of employee, you get different types of employees, employees needs, wants, desires often change. And so you have to be able to revise that journey map. And so as we do some uh, different revisions and we, we go back and we look at, at that employee uh, journey map, um, revise, taking the time to revise the employee journey map allows you to, to move forward towards continuous improvement, okay? Um, and continuous improvement simply means that as we, as employees' needs change, so we go back and address those, uh, those employee needs, okay? And we want to continually optimize that performance. Yeah, it's a great question. Sonia asked us, how often do you recommend an organization should audit, evaluate their journey maps? And I think it, it, it does depend. It just has to be done on a, some kind of a cyclical basis. I would say that if you wait you know, probably five years, it's probably too long, but probably at least, I would estimate at least once a year, you should go back and look at your journey maps, make sure you're still identifying the, the right steps or have any of our processes changed. And you'd be surprised. And um, I guess I'll go back to a, an example um, in, in an organization that I was just uh, consulting with. And it had been a long time since they had, it had been more than two years since they had looked at the different types of employees. Um, technology had evolved. And so a lot of their processes were based on, uh, were not in, incorporating the current technology that they were using. There were a lot of gaps that they identified, a lot of complaints and customer feedback that they had from their new hires that helped them identify wow, this, this, this is not working. They're still referring to old systems and processes that are no longer in use. And so I'd say that to answer your question shortly, uh, Sonia, is that as, as long as that map is still relevant, it's, it's something that your organization has to periodically look at. So I won't give you an exact time, but if it's been several years, it's definitely too long. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, and again, I, I know we're we're just pressing through this a, a little bit, but I want to give you an opportunity to share. Anybody have any 
any thoughts, ideas on employee journey mapping or, or specific questions that you'd like me to address, please please feel free to put it in the chat. And again, we, we, we talked about uh, employee journey mapping. Great question, Paul. Is the map specific to the employee or specific to the position? I typically will make this employee map. If you go back to the persona, I try to make it specific to that persona. And so you can think of a specific person who, and I like to advise organizations to start with your typical employee. What does that typical employee look like? What are they thinking, feeling, doing? Uh, we give them a name and a persona to make it very specific. And so you make it that very specific to that persona. And in that process, that'll help you drive um, the rest of the employee journey map. Yeah, great, great question. Uh, great. And I, and I like the follow up, Paul, is that some employees aspire to move into leadership and some are great to, to stay in their current positions as individual contributors. And I like to do this, and you may have to do a journey map from both perspectives to give you a more holistic view of, of your organizational processes. Okay. And so journey mapping is something that you can do from multiple perspectives. It will help help you help you drive those decisions on what investments you want to make into those opportunities. And so you see the different opportunities at, across the bottom. Uh, I challenge organizations to not only identify the opportunities, but now we have a starting point for prioritization. And so now we can take those opportunities, we can list them out, prioritize which, which one do we want to invest in first, which one do we want to invest in next, um, because you're not going to be able to just improve all of those opportunities at one time. Um, uh, Sig Perez asked, how often should we survey each persona during their, employ em during their employment? Um, we currently only do an exit interview. And so, again, it depends. Every organization is different. However, I would say that um, the employee journey map is a great way to identify what are those touch points that you may have with your employees. So you may have, uh, I've seen organizations that have a monthly town hall, which is, which is geared to generate feedback on what your employees are thinking, feeling, and doing. Um, and we have to design those feedback loops. It could be a quarterly employment survey. You know, everybody hates surveys and the response rate is often low, but they do generate some great uh, information and feedback that could be the data from those surveys could drive the sentiments that you are capturing on your opportunities. Okay. Um, and as Sig said, uh, their organization currently only does an exit interview. Okay. I, I understand that. Exit interview can provide, especially on, if you look on the far right, you know, we'll give you some some uh, interesting opportunities. However, I would challenge you not to not to wait till just an exit interview. Great, great questions, great feedback. Okay, and again, the I only put up one one uh, employee journey sample up here. Uh, there are numerous different uh, templates that you can create and use. Um, Again, going back to uh, as we think about our employee journey, um, you don't have to do this from 10 different personas. You can pick your typical employee or pick, pick, pick at least two. Maybe it's one from a, a, new, a new hire versus an experienced hire. Those are, those are two, uh, two ways you could do it. And it allows you to kind of set some tangible goals for, for what you might be looking for. Um, how, 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 do, how does everybody else, how do you collect uh, feedback on your employee's journey? How do you guys currently, how do your organizations collect feedback on your employee's journeys? Yeah, great. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, some biweekly, uh, one-on-ones, annual performance reviews. Great. And so 
Anybody else have another one? Surveys, focus groups, team meetings. All those will will talk about. All those will will bring out opportunities, and you can also gauge experience on how how you're how you're doing it. All right. Thank thank you, Alexia. Uh, Alexia says, I lead our employee listening strategy at, at my company, and we have many outlets, census engagement surveys, pulses, lifestyle surveys, and 360 assessments, all, all phenomenal tools to, to generate engagement. And I, I use the word engagement because I, I, like the, I like the word employee listening strategy. <clears throat> and I like engagement because it's not just feedback. It's engagement because you have an opportunity to engage your employees, figure out what their current sentiments are, um, mapping them on a employee journey will help you predict where you're gonna have those pain points. It'll figure, help you figure out where you may need to adjust and then allow you to uh, prioritize those adjustments that you're going to make. So <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, to, to wrap this up, and let me just reiterate uh, what we talked about. We talked about the five steps of uh, creating that employee journey, uh, employee journey map. And we, if you remember, we talked about first defining and selecting an, the employee type, then mapping out the journey based on the stages of uh, employment at your organization. Finally, we said, or the next we said, you're going to factor in employee feedback, creating those feedback loops that will drive uh, understanding how employees are doing, thinking, feeling, and experiencing. Based on that feedback, we went on to the next step, which was identify value creation opportunities. And then finally, we said you must revise the employee journey map. And so that concludes my presentation for today. Hopefully, you have a little bit of an understanding I do teach uh, other classes at SoftEd, so I teach the uh, Agile Human Resources um, class. I teach uh, design thinking, I teach and, and lead design thinking workshops, and I also teach project management. And so if you're thinking about getting some additional training, please um, visit the SoftEd website. Please consider signing up for some additional training. There are lots of uh, training opportunities and a lot of different topics. Um, during my Agile Human Resources course, I talk a lot more about this uh, employee journey mapping and we do a few exercises to actually do practical applications of it. So thank you for your time this afternoon and I hope everybody has a great day and uh, you can apply a little bit of what we learned. And again, this recording will be posted on SoftEd and, and you will see it also on LinkedIn as well. So uh, thank you for joining today and I, and I hope to uh, see some of you in a future class. And yes, you will get the PDU information. Uh, everybody who attends today will be eligible for, for PDU credits as well. Um, and I'll make sure that gets, uh, gets posted. I believe this is uh, one PDU. All right, I'll stand by just for a few more moments for questions. Any, any last questions? And my pleasure teaching the, or, or leading this discussion today.